This prophetic encouragements are from Veronica West for the year 2024. 2024, the year the warriors will arise, shine, roar, and reign. 2024 is a door that leads to a greater manifestation of kingdom reformation and divine restore in the midst of a greater awakening, harvest, and war. Arise, warriors! It's time to shine, roar, and reign in 2024. I hear the Spirit say, Call my people to the altar in repentance. Call them to the place of fire and power, for this is a critical and strategic hour. There is no time to waste. Listen. For there is a sound of celebration in the camp of the enemy as he anticipates greater victories. But nay, I say, for I have prepared a remnant for such as time as this, a holy and set-apart people, bold, courageous and fearless in the face of the enemy. For they have taken hold of the horns of the altar, and the sound of their cries and true repentance have filled the courtroom of heaven. Their tears have filled the golden bowls, and their prayers, day and night, have filled my nostrils like a sweet-smelling perfume. Ha! Now watch as the weight of their true repentance and worship begins to shift the scales of justice and righteousness. Scales I am for there is coming a sudden and divine tipping point that shall thwart the works of the kingdom of darkness, for the I tell you the truth, the sound of the celebrations of the enemy shall soon be silenced by the sound of the roar of the Lion of Judah. Have I not said that the war has already been fought and won? For the enemy was defeated before even one shot was fired, before even one sword was drawn, before even one shield was lifted. Beloved, have I not put within you the power to prevail against your enemies that relentlessly pursue you? Have I not put within you the strength to stand steadfast and immovable in the face of every satanic and demonic onslaught that comes against you? Fear not. As you give yourself fully to the work of my kingdom, you shall stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord accomplished for you. Now, lay hold of these truths, my overcoming ones, for it's vital to the victory being made manifest in the midst of you. As you stay seated with me in heavenly places, Satan will surely loose the battle in earthly places, for these struggles are not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Always remember, my fearless warriors, Satan can only take what he has been given a legal right to take, for when the altars are neglected and broken down, the devourer is given full access to take ground, occupy territory, and establish his kingdom of destruction in the land. Satan is the destroyer and a relentless tormentor. An old and treacherous adversary who hates my righteous and redeemed ones. Day and night the devourer sets traps and digs deep ditches for the feet of the saints. Quietly and cunningly he creeps in the shadows, watching and waiting for those who have become isolated and cut off from the rest of the body, and like a lion, driven and cast out from among the pride, Satan knows that his strength is no match against those who have laid claim to the authority of the King of Heaven and Earth. So, arise warriors! It is time to shine, rode and reign in 2024. It is time to drive him out and subdue his earthly kingdoms and reign victorious in the kingdom of heaven. Lift up your voices like the sound of many loud trumpets and let the battle cry of victory go forth and watch as the walls coming crashing down. I say, rise up. It's time, for I have crowned you as kings and high priests that you should sit upon the throne to share in my authority and power so that my glory may be seen in all the earth. This is my greatest joy, beloved, that we may be co-laborers together, going forth into the nations to dismantle strongholds and dethrone the princes of darkness. Surely I have invested everything that I have, and all that I am, in you, so that the inheritance I have promised you shall not be lost nor stolen. So, take it now. You don't have to wait. The wealth of the nations belongs to you. As you reign in me and I reign in you, my glory shall be made manifest on the earth, and the light of my sun shall diminish the darkness, and my will will be done, and my kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. Arise, O mighty warriors, rule, reign, and lay claim to your kingdom inheritance. 
a powerful dream, the caterpillar, the moth, the locust, the door of great restore in 2024. Last night I had a powerful dream wherein I saw the spiritual landscape of my own nation Ireland and then the landscape of many other nations. As far as my eyes could see in the dream, I saw the spiritual landscape of nations had been invaded by demonic caterpillars and hordes of locusts. Now, as I was permitted to draw closer in the dream, I saw caterpillars assigned to the lives of people. These caterpillars did not eat grass or leaves, but they slowly ate away at the years. These caterpillars were assigned to time. I watched as these caterpillars were crawling and gnawing their way through the destinies of individuals, caterpillars that decimated families, marriages, and relationships. These caterpillars moved slowly, they were subtle and stealthy. Caterpillars that moved in the darkness like an aggressive cancer. These caterpillars had a ravenous hunger that could not be satisfied. They ate day and night without ceasing, and like a deadly cancer, these caterpillars ate into the bodies of many causing sickness, infirmity and disease, death, great pain and suffering. Then I watched, as some of these caterpillars morphed into what looked like great big moths that sat upon the livelihoods of many, moths that created massive holes in the pockets and purses of the people. In the dream, I knew that the moths were not only assigned to destroy the property and prosperity of the people, but these moths were assigned to ultimately destroy financial structures and systems. These massive moths were moths assigned to bring nations into a time of great famine. Now, in the dream, seeing many of the caterpillars turning into moths, I knew by the spirit, this was an upgrading of demonic spirits at work, as they gained greater legal rights and passages to invade. This demonic spiritual metamorphosis clearly represented the ranking system of the demonic realm and the satanic assignment that was taking place among the nations. I was shown clearly in the dream that these caterpillars, moths and locusts were designed and assigned to destroy the destinies of the people in the land and the destinies of nations. I saw that these caterpillars and moths were also generational, and there were generational life cycles of these caterpillars and moths. No sooner had some of the caterpillars and moths died off and a new and more powerful species of caterpillar and moth was brought forth, the generational life cycles of disease, death and destruction of many destinies. Then the dream shifted and I saw what looked like high-ranking locust hordes that were assigned to specific regions and territories within nations. These demonic locusts were powerful and devoured decades of time, literally in a matter of days and weeks. These swarming locusts were assigned to destroy the destinies of nations in a matter of days, and as far as my eyes could see, the landscapes of many nations were being covered in a thick blanket of locusts. I watched and saw that as the church slept, as the watchmen slumbered, as the walls and gates of the nations were unguarded, and as the church gave itself over more and more to a woke agenda, these invading locusts only gained in greater strength and power, and they increased in number and in size. I watched as decades of time was being devoured in a matter of days. Regions and territories were being brutally invaded and overtaken, and the destruction of the destiny of nations was in full swing. But then suddenly I heard these words, watch. For I'll make up for the years of the locust, the great locust devastation. Locusts, savage locusts, deadly, fierce locusts, locusts of doom, that great locust invasion I sent your way, asterisk asterisk. You'll eat your fill of good food. You'll be full of praises to your God. The God who has set you back on your heels in wonder. Never again will my people be despised. You'll know without question that I'm in the thick of life with Israel. That I'm your God. Yes, your God. The one and only real God. Never again will my people be despised. And as those words echoed loudly, like the sound of a mighty rushing of ten thousand waterfalls in the dream, suddenly, I heard these words. Watch. For the door of great restore shall open in 2024. Watch. 
for the Kairos will collide with the Kronos, and the scales of justice and righteousness shall tip, for a time and season of divine restore will begin to take place in the midst of great destruction, famine and even war. I say again, the time of great restore shall begin in 2024. I say, for I am the door of revelation for. Yes. I call you, my remnant, to come up here, to come up higher and enter in, for I am the door of great restore. Now, watch as my redeeming hand moves upon the hands of the Kronos, for this is an appointed time, a Kairos time and season, for that which was devoured by the crawling caterpillar and swarming and invading locusts, shall surely be redeemed and restored in the days ahead. Says God. The honeybees are coming. God said, the honeybees are coming to restore what the locusts have eaten. Watch. For the honeybees are coming. Watch. For the honeybees are coming to restore what the locusts have eaten. The Spirit of God woke me in the early hours of this morning and spoke these words to me, Daughter, tell my people that the honeybees are coming to restore what the locusts have eaten. As he spoke these words, suddenly I heard in the spirit the sound of humming bees in the distance, and then I saw a river of thick golden honey flowing towards the house of God. The Holy Spirit immediately whispered to me, Daughter, get ready for a river of prophetic revelation and impartation, for my word will be as a river of sweet honey flowing forth from the lips of my sons and daughters. As I listened to the precious Holy Spirit, he then showed me the words, cross-pollination of power and purpose in this hour. I prophesy that in this hour and season a river of sweet honey, prophetic revelation, is going to flow forth across the body of Christ, and we are going to see a cross-pollination of God's kingdom purposes and power, and a river of prophetic revelation is coming to heal and restore what the locusts have eaten in the areas of unity, vision, provision, submission, honor, and love for one another. Now as we know bees are harvesters, going from flower to flower collecting and cross-pollinating, I believe that what the Holy Spirit was showing me in my prayer time this morning, is that there are many in the body of Christ who are broken, bruised and wounded and are just waiting for the harvesters to come and sprinkle them with the golden dust of His glory. There are many who are waiting for the glory carriers to arise in greater boldness and kingdom authority that will impart to them the new life, power and purposes of God. And just like the bees, I believe that we will see the power, productivity and fruitfulness that comes when the spirit of unity, submission and sacrifice is at work in our midst. Now as I continued to pray the Holy Spirit spoke again saying, Watch for now a river of honey, revelation, is now flowing forth from the belly of the Lion of Judah, the body of Christ. Then he quickened these scriptures to me, There was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands, and went on eating, and came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did eat, but he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion, Judges 14 verses 8 to 9. And with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee, Psalms 81 verse 16. In this hour, I prophesy God is feeding his people with honey that will flow like a river from a rock many will begin to receive fresh, revelation and supernatural impartation from the solid rock, yes. From the stone that the builders rejected. Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath, wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and he dipped it in a honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. 1 Samuel 14 verse 27 I prophesy, just as Jonathan ate the sweet honey and his eyes were healed and enlightened, so many across the body of Christ are now receiving supernatural healing and a new level and measure of divine illumination and enlightenment. There is a supernatural unveiling and revealing of God's wisdom and prophetic revelation that is flowing forth to bring many into a new dimension of spiritual sight and understanding. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock, Deuteronomy 32 verse 13 I decree, just as God fed Jacob honey from the rock, and oil from the flinty rock, so the spirit of wisdom is releasing to the body of Christ in this hour, greater revelation and the spirit of counsel and might is freshly. Anointing the chosen and elect of God. 
I see God revealing himself as Christ the rock to his covenant people in this season, Deuteronomy 32. Friends, get ready for the honeybees that are coming to restore what the locusts have eaten. Here are some verses for this word. Isaiah 54 from the Amplified Bible Shout for joy, O barren one, she who has not given birth. Break forth into joyful shouting and rejoice, she who has not gone into labor with child. For the spiritual sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the sight of your tent to make room for more children. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings, do not spare them. Lengthen your tent ropes and make your peg stakes firm in the ground. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. And your descendants will take possession of nations and will inhabit deserted cities. Do not fear, for you will not be put to shame, and do not feel humiliated or ashamed, for you will not be disgraced. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and you will no longer remember the disgrace of your widowhood. For your husband is your maker, the Lord of hosts is his name. And your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, who is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you, like a wife who has been abandoned, grieved in spirit, and like a wife married in her youth when she is later rejected and scorned, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great compassion and mercy I will gather you to myself again. In an outburst of wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have compassion on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. For this is like the waters of Noah to me, as I swore an oath that the waters of Noah would not flood the earth again. In the same way, I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, nor will I rebuke you. For the mountains may be removed and the hills may shake, but my loving kindness will not be removed from you, nor will my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has compassion on you. O you afflicted city, storm-tossed, and not comforted, listen carefully, I will set your precious stones in mortar, and lay your foundations with sapphires. And I will make your battlements of rubies, and your gates of shining barrel stones, and all your barrier walls of precious stones. And all your spiritual sons will be disciples of the Lord, and great will be the well-being of your sons. You will be firmly established in righteousness, you will be far from even the thought of oppression, for you will not fear, and from terror, for it will not come near you. If anyone fiercely attacks you, it will not be from me. Whoever attacks you will fall because of you. Listen carefully, I have created the smith who blows on the fire of coals, and who produces a weapon for its purpose. And I have created the destroyer to inflict ruin. No weapon that is formed against you will succeed. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment you will condemn. This peace, righteousness, security, and triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, says the Lord. Joel 2 verses 23 to 27 from the Amplified Bible So rejoice, O children of Zion, and delight in the Lord, your God. For he has given you the early autumn rain in vindication, and he has poured down the rain for you, the early autumn rain and the late spring rain, as before. And the threshing floors shall be full of grain, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. And I will compensate you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the creeping locust, the stripping locust, and the gnawing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. And you shall know without any doubt that I am in the midst of Israel to protect and bless you, and that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people will never be put to shame. Matthew 3 verses 8 to 10 from the Amplified Bible so produce fruit that is consistent with repentance demonstrating new behavior that proves a change of heart and a conscious decision to turn away from sin. 
and do not presume to say to yourselves as a defense, We have Abraham for our father, so our inheritance assures us of salvation. For I say to you that from these stones God is able to raise up children descendants for Abraham. And already the axe of God's judgment is swinging toward the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Acts 3 verses 19 to 21 from the Amplified Bible. So repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret past sins and return to God, seek His purpose for your life, so that your sins may be wiped away blotted out, completely erased, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day and that he may send to you Jesus, the Christ, who has been appointed for you, whom heaven must keep until the time for the complete restoration of all things about which God promised through the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient time. Here's the pray along video for this word. Heavenly Father, all-powerful, almighty, all-loving and all-merciful Father, I knock at the door of your restoration with a repentant heart. I change my inner self by the power of your Spirit. I turn from the old way of thinking, regret past sins, and return to you, Lord. I seek your purpose for my life, family, community, and nation. And by the power of the precious blood of Jesus and your merciful heart, my sins are wiped away and blotted out, wholly erased. Let your refreshing and restoration come like a cool wind on a hot day. Let me produce fruit consistent with my repentance, demonstrating new behavior that proves a change of heart and a conscious decision to turn away from sin. Father, I can't do this on my own. And I need your power to change me, and I surrender to your process and purpose. You are the Lord, and there is no other. And I will not be put to shame in trusting you. Let the door of restoration be opened for me. Let the honeybees come and bring restoration. In Jesus' name, amen. To support and read more prophetic words from today's featured prophet, Veronica West, please follow her Facebook page.